Hello and welcome to my quick tutorial on vertex blending. Um, this will be really quick and uh, you'll need two different packages. Uh, one of them is Shaderforge and the other one is Ikari Vertex Painter. You'll be able to find these two in um, the asset store. Uh, I'll provide a link in the description so you can find them there. Okay, as you can see I have my geometry um, import into the scene and this was just a quick thing I made in Maya just for this tutorial's purpose and yeah down here in the project tab I have four different uh, folders within my root I've got my geometry folder my materials folder my packages folder as you can see I've got my Kari vertex painter and my shader forge folder folders in my packages just so I can reduce the clutter within my root. Uh, I've got my textures folder. As you can see, I have three different textures. All of them are tileable, uh, I believe. Well, I did just make them, so um, yeah. You have, if you can, please try to find three different tileable textures for this tutorial. Uh, that'd be great. So now, if you've got your uh, textures imported, we'll head over to Window up the top and we'll click on Shadowforge. Uh, that is assuming you have Shadowforge imported. Okay, so we'll click on New Shader. Uh, we'll put in our Materials folder and we'll name this 3 Blend S. And this is, we'll name it 3 Blend because we'll be blending three different materials together. Okay, so move the space around. Um, you can do that by holding Alt and dragging around with the middle mouse button. Uh, so we'll move this over a bit. Uh, okay. So uh, with your textures, just drag them in into the space, the workspace, and be sure to rename your nodes. So I'll name this one Dirt underscore one, Grass underscore one. This is really important later on. So sure you do name them okay so to marquee select them with a rectangular marquee just hold down alt and drag with left mouse button so please move it over to the left a bit uh, it really depends on where you want it this is personal preference however you do need the space in between main and your textures so if you do that that'd be great okay so in between these we'll add three different lerp nodes uh, you can do that by holding L and clicking on the lerp. So we we'll need three of them. Have them side by side. As I said before, it is all personal preference. However, I keep them side by side because it's more easy. With, it's more easy to connect them. Okay. Underneath all these, uh, we'll put in vertex color. Okay. Uh, you could do that by holding down V and left clicking. Okay. Um. Now that we've got all those out. Uh, we'll start connecting them. So the RGB of my bottom texture will go into the B of the bottom lerp. And we'll grab the RGB of the bottom texture again and place it into the A of the A input of the top lerp. Okay. So we'll grab the RGB of the middle texture and we'll put into the B of the middle lerp and the RGB of the top texture and put into the B of the top lerp. Okay. So now we'll connect our vertex color channels into our lerp. So grab the red channel of our vertex color and place it into the T input, which I believe is um, oops, which I believe is uh, alpha in uh, Unreal Engine 4. So I'm guessing it is transparency. I could be wrong though. So uh, we'll grab the green channel and put into the T of the middle lerp and the uh, blue channel into the T of the top lerp. So now we'll connect our lerps, we'll grab the output of the top lerp and place it into the A input of the middle lerp and we'll grab the output of the middle lerp and place it into the A input of the bottom lerp. So now we'll grab the output of the bottom lerp and place the diffuse which will make our material. As you can see, we created my material can look at it in the preview window. Okay, so moving this back over, um, we'll compile shader and 
we can close down Shader Forge. So in your project uh, tab, uh, and in your materials folder, your shader should be created. Okay, so once you've gotten that, uh, right click it and head over to create and we'll make a new material. Uh, we'll name it 3 blend underscore mat for material. And there we go. Now we've got that sphere. Alright, so with it selected, head over to the inspector and as you can see you'll find the nodes that you renamed. Uh, that's why we renamed them so you know which is which. Alright, so dirt underscore 01 pretty self-explanatory uh, I'll choose my dirt um, texture you can do that by uh, clicking on select here in that box okay so I'll put in my other ones glass underscore 01 glass underscore 02 alright so now your uh, material should be uh, text textured so grab your material and place it in Ooh. I've already, <laughs> I was messing around with the Kari earlier, so this wasn't supposed to happen. Give me a moment, please. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, so uh, it's fresh now, so I don't have any vertex um, painted in, vertex color painted in, so yeah, it should look like this. Okay, so um, now that we've got that done, Let's have it head over to window and assuming that you've gotten your um, Ikari Vertex Painter, which I mentioned earlier, uh, imported, then you'll find it right above Shader Forge. Uh, and just click on it and you'll be greeted with this window. Okay, so um, Ikari Vertex Painter is pretty self explanatory. There are a few tools that um, I don't really understand, but I try to explain them as best as I can. Okay, so run right underneath Ikari Vertex Painter. For me, it's transparent. The this menu is transparent. I don't know why it's transparent, but it's sort of, it was sort of hidden for me at first, and I couldn't really find it. So yeah, it's it's there. So um, let's head head over to the edit menu first. Um, you can find your hotkeys. So you can bind your hotkeys for your tools. Uh, and there's uninstaller, it has a description of what it does, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, for hotkeys, click on the box if you want to change it, and yeah, uh, bind to a hotkey to your liking. To get rid of it, um, just click on it and hit escape, and it'll go back to none. Um, if you look over here, there are different checkboxes, uh, control and shift and alt are all on your keyboard, so for me, uh, to paint, I have to hold control and that will paint in my geometry. Uh, and my erase is control shift and that will erase in my geometry. Uh, these other ones, uh, I don't really look at them because um, I can change all those in the main menu. Uh, they're all here and it's more easy to access them in the main menu because you have the main menu open all the time when you're painting because, yeah. Um, now we'll head over to the help menu. Uh, in the help menu, you can find uh, you'll be a, you'll be able to ask the developer questions, uh, suggest um, whatever you want to the developer, or report any bugs that you find along the way. All right, let's head over to main menu. Um, okay, so we have different tabs. I'll close them all so you can see more easily um, so I'll open all these individually so we'll have a look at a uh, look at each uh, property so we'll first open object properties um, I have no idea what this means it says save colors on uh, I usually just keep them instant um, whenever I hit asset it tries to save like it opens a save window whenever I try to paint so I keep it on instance uh, it's more easier that way uh, okay, let's close down the object properties. Uh, we'll open up color properties. In here, you can find your RGB and A. You can switch between paint color. Uh, you can also swap to your eraser. 
and you're hitting this swap button which is really useful it's fine and dandy so yeah it's pretty straightforward let's hide this color properties and tool properties you can switch between brush and bucket and by opening brush properties uh, and switching between the two you can see changes um, bucket you can find your bucket size in the bucket properties and in brush you know, you'll find brush size uh, brush strength I think that's a typo um, <laughs> and angle limit I honestly don't know what angle limit does because I haven't really used it yet um, but yeah there's that uh, you can mess around in your time so yeah um, so now in paint properties uh, you can switch between object mode so uh, if you have this selected you can paint on just that uh, if you have per objects so if you have a lot of stuff in your scene and you only want to paint the ground then per object if you have per object selected and your object selected in the hierarchy um, you'll see up here right underneath object properties uh, a new tab pops up called selected objects properties and you'll see the cube pops up as well and you can change the um, you can show your vertex normals or you can go back to your material um, you can disable enable disable wireframe uh, the reason why I like using all is because currently I, I don't know if it's a bug or not but the wireframe just um, continues appearing uh, when I have the object selected so yeah I keep it on all so that I can um, paint without having to select this geometry uh, the developer says that uh, the developer of this system Ikari Vertex Painter uh, says that it's due to the collider uh, so he said that he'll be looking into that in a bit so yeah I'll, I like keeping it all and uh, I don't know what paint channel does uh, to be honest um, let's have a try uh, it's not really doing anything is it uh, I'll have a look at that later on um, hold on let me click out of this okay uh, Paint properties, let's hide that. Gizmo properties, you can change the way your gizmo looks. Self explanatory. Uh, handle color, outline handle color. Yeah. It's all to your personal preferences. Uh, I keep it default, it works that way. So, yeah. And right underneath gizmo properties, after hiding it, um, you'll see start painting. And um, if you have issues here, I had issues earlier because I didn't have collider, mesh collider in the geometry. So uh, if you find issues, make sure you have mesh collider in your geometry and that should fix it. Um, okay. So now that we've all got on all that done, let's open up our color properties, our tool properties, our brush properties. And I think that's it. Hold on, let me check. Yep. Uh, it's, elect uh, it's on all. Uh, object mode is on all, so I'll be able to paint that without having to open the wireframe. Uh, it's just a quick workaround because having this selected, it um, has the wireframe out and you can't hide it, as you can see. Uh, oh, I forgot about these ones. Uh, underneath, disable wireframe, enable wireframe. There's copy vertex color and paste vertex color. So. If you want, you can copy the vertex color that you um, painted in and paste it onto other geometry. All right, so I'm clicking off this and let's start painting. Uh, once, once, you ha uh, once you hit start painting, uh, find if you hover over your geometry, a big brush thing pops up. Uh, yeah, so if you left click or if you start painting on it um, you start painting in your detail and uh, it works the same way as Unreal Engine 4's uh, so yeah uh, pretty straightforward uh, let's go over to green and uh, using your brush properties you can also blend them in so changing your brush strength let's change your brush size to like 12 or something so you can blend in your textures as well so they're not too harsh so 
but yeah, there's that. So, um, I guess that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And yeah, I'll see you next time.